So l- last last night I asked you about um, your art, mm. uh, and and I had I had the impression, the wrong impression, that it was just a hobby of art that you weren't able to go back to. And I thought, well, that's curious. Why can't she do that? But I didn't realise it was a job. And for some reason, to me, that makes all the difference. I have no curiosity as to why you wouldn't go back to a job because that takes a huge amount of commitment. You have to, you have to produce the results even when you don't feel like it. And that's not the same as a hobby, which you can just follow your nose and follow your inspiration. So um, bear with me as I sprint things out tonight. Yeah. yeah. Uh, So I went to Comic-Con and I asked some of the comic artists because I assumed that they would all love what they did. You know, they created beautiful art and none of them enjoyed what they were doing because of the the time deadlines. Oh. And, and I was really surprised that, that they would create such beautiful art and, and not, not enjoy the process. So when, when you said, you know, you tried the art thing and for whatever reason it didn't happen, I thought, well, that makes, that makes good sense. So th- there's, there's nothing else you would, you would say like about your, your art hobbies or anything? Like do you do art anymore? Mm. So I, I was a designer. So that, yeah, the interest in that has really fallen. But the like illustration I used to like as a hobby, kind of. Um, and yeah, I tried to go back to it, but it's the interest also there kind of dropped. But this is different for everyone. So it doesn't, sometimes hobbies can like become more intense. But for here, it's like it kind of, yeah, went away. So do you think people's expectations of what the falling away process should be like actually hamper what's what's going on uh because we all have different scenarios some we're really panicking about you know i could relate to some of the people last night who were very scared of what what might befall them Mm -hmm. and 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 you know we've got all these ideas and you know perhaps that that's actually preventing something now I know you don't you don't believe in there, you know, because this is this is it basically right now. Uh, but I I have a I have a, a different theory in that we blink, we have our heartbeat, we 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 hear automatically, we think automatically, and we feel pretty much automatically through no fault of our own. If any of those elements are dysfunctional, then that, that, or we have physical pain, then that, that could be a, that could be a problem. And I I guess I don't know what I'm getting at, but I, I I do see that, you know, there, there there could be some dysfunction occurring uh, that that may need to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So I, not necessarily like the, the kind of like, I guess you, whatever awakening or energetic shift can happen literally whenever it's really unpredictable. Um, it, it's so spontaneous, but I think also there, there is a preference here to like have have the the psychology relatively okay because if the shift actually happened it might become worse before it gets better you know so it's like it's it's a lot for the body it's a lot to process so it could be really really painful 
Um, but that's also not to say like, it, it's, it's actually, it can go a little faster because no one's identified at least as much to all of the stuff. So it, it has the potential to kind of express itself and then dissolve. And then there's also who knows what will actually fall away because it varies for everybody. So that's also unknown. Would you, um, I've, I've come across a few examples of people that suffered physical, physical pain who were enlightened and they seem to suffer quite greatly. So would, would you say that a person who is not enlightened, they go to the dentist and they can do all sorts of things to just to keep a little bit of distance away from the pain? Uh, I mean, I, I guess an enlightened person could have all sorts of diversionary tactics or whatever. Uh, is is the experience of pain is a, a, can can that not be blocked out? So you go to the dentist and you basically you are in that you are in that very moment that that second, and and um, whereas someone like me, I'd probably be counting in my head just to create some distance. Mm. Uh, would, would, would you just sit back and take it or? I, I think in general, there would just be an okayness with the pain because it's just what it is. And there's less ability to project how long the pain will last. It can still happen, but it's not really truly believed in. So it's, it's just like, it's just full on what it is. And yeah, I would, I would say that that separation, like ability to kind of, you know, um, feel like I'm feeling it. I'm, I can control it a little bit. I can, yeah, control how much I feel that can create the a little bit more suffering because it's like I'm going to be feeling this for this long it, it creates the psychological kind of anxiety about it yeah that that makes sense so so whatever bubble I'm in I have to I, I've, I'm creating the psychological uh terror of the dentist or whatever uh but and and then, then I'm using techniques, uh, but it sounds like you don't have so much of the, the you know the the psychological terror going on, and so there are certain aspects of my suffering that don't appear to be part, which is good because I was just I was just thinking you guys were just going to have to, you know, this is the price I pay for being in line. I have to cop pain, mm. and you know, there's no, there's, uh, there's no getting away from it. But it, but it, it's it's um you've explained it well. Yeah, yeah. Now I've I've uh, written down some some of I think the quotes from you. I'm I'm not going to say any of them are, are from you because <laughs> I don't know where some of them came from. So. Um, but also Actually, just, it, just to say about like this, the psychological suffering. Yeah. You're not, no one's responsible for that. It's just a play that's appearing to happen. And then it can, it can feel like, you know, I'm creating that or, but it's not, it's actually like the, that kind of psychology kind of is the same as, this sense that we call a me, but the me is not there. It's not producing anything. It's just an effect that's happening. So, I mean, I got up this morning and I was anxious about the day and, and there, there was nothing to do actually. Uh, and what you're saying is that just popped into my head and I really had no control over that. Mm. I'm just glad that doesn't happen every day. 
because uh, <laughs> yeah, that that would be less cool. Yeah. Uh, so I had this question for you. Uh, do you have an image that you think other people have of you? So, so for instance, I'm the most attractive man in the world, <laughs> and and I know that when people see me, they'll be thinking how how good looking this mm-hmm. guy is. Or the flip side, I'm the ugliest person in the world, and I know that people will look at me and I don't know, perhaps they'll be scared or whatever. Do you, do you have a, you know, when when you're, I guess it's called self consciousness, but but you know, it's it's literally, uh, I think some people do have. What are they thinking of me? Well, you know, and and they're they're living in someone else's imagination, if you know what I mean. Do you do you have any of that sort of stuff going on? Mm. So that diminished um quite quickly so i would say in the beginning there were still habits here of being a little self-conscious like feeling nervous but it seemed to die off quite quickly because there was no one really at the center of it anymore it was just a reaction that was playing out out of habit because this the person here was really self-conscious and had a lot of social anxiety at one point it diminished but um yeah and and had a lot of concern about the appearance but now i would say like it's just what it is it's just a body it's it just acts the way it acts um and even even if I would say something there in the beginning, there would be some self-consciousness, like, am I misleading people too much? Or like, did I say it right? And, but that seems to dwindle as well. That sounds really nice, actually. Uh, <laughs> the, just, just the, the idea that that gets turned down. Sounds like it gets turned down quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so w- I have a niece and a nephew and I'll buy them presents and I'll get really excited imagining not only whether they'll enjoy it, but how great they'll think I am. So I guess that 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 is just, I guess that's just what we've been talking about. So when you get your sister a present, do you, do you still go, do you get excited by that process or, or is, is just something you never thought of or? Mm. yeah i think there can still be excitement um but yeah there wouldn't be a, i hope she likes me or i hope she thinks better <laughs> yeah. of me or yeah. I, I think i think the present would just come from like yeah just want to give something to her um yeah yeah, no, I'm, I'm certainly, yeah, I'm, I'm topping up a lot of the excitement by making it about me. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean that, that's the whole thing, isn't it? That the, the me that was anxious this morning, it was me's anxiety. There, there seem, seems to be, me has tentacles in a lot of areas, and that's. That that's one of them. It'll it'll take the feelings uh, and the thoughts, and that'll say, yeah, yeah. There's that um, that sort of thing. But then there's this bizarre what they call that energetic contraction in the the body that it's like a physical representation of something, but it but it. It's surprising. It shouldn't have anything to do with, you know, whether there's ownership of the feelings and stuff. It just, they, I can't put them together. But it seems that we think, oh, yeah, there's a me in here because I can feel it and everything else, yeah, the feelings, the thoughts, the story of my life, even, even dramas like, 
uh, I, I bought some products that, that didn't arrive online. I had to chase some packages around. And all of a sudden, I'm feeling thwarted. I have goals. I'm a real person. I ha- you know, I'm trying to make things happen and people are getting in my way. And, mm-hmm. and, and it's that stirring up of the emotions and all of a sudden I feel even more real. Mm. So let's say you have a, an, an emotion that's, that's strong. Will you, I, I guess you don't know what you'll do till it happens, but will, will, you, will you go, hang on, this emotion is too stirred up. I'll just stop. I'll just have a rest now because, you know, this, this is getting too real. Mm. No, there is there's no technique applied. It's more like uh, the emotion's just there. So it, it's, just, it's just clear that it's not happening to anyone. So it's just what it is. No one made it happen. No one brought it on. No one has control in that way. So no one can really like take it away in a sense, you know? I mean, wh- when, that, when that sense of a me is there, there can be attempts to kind of like, you know, lessen it. Cause it's understandable that it can be uncomfortable. So that can happen within the play of, you know, the me feeling like it's like it's there because it's just there you know no one is actually making that happen either so that can that can happen and all of this will you know seem like a process as long as that sense is there and the ownership will automatically happen so you know there's nothing wrong with any of it and yeah, but as as yeah, a description, okay. it's just like there's nothing to do with the emotion now. It's just it's just is what it is, and then it loses its its power because yeah, nothing is behind it, so it'll leave when it leaves. You you said, and maybe even last night at, at some point, you said something like, "I don't even know what a feeling is." Uh-huh. And then you said, I don't even know what a thought is. Uh-huh. And I just thought, I've got to ask her about that because, like, <laughs> you know, what what are you getting at? Mm. So I think, I think when more falls away, so things in general kind of slow down and then you're kind of able to see thoughts and what we call emotions but you see that you have no idea what they are where they're coming from um it's a total mystery but when when it seems like it's like someone is feeling that someone is thinking that you it's really hard to even like kind of question it and kind of look at it for what it is because it feels like you are the emotion you are the thought in a way so totally. here it you it just arises it it just sounds like something's talking and there's no ownership of it so it's just like i don't know what that is where it's coming from it's not my voice it's just <laughs> yeah yeah freaky yeah that's that's freaky um because like you say not not only do i identify with the thought and 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 and, you know i'm lost in it i i'm mesmerized in it i'm also almost encapsulated by it and it just seems to have me have me have me until it doesn't Mm -hmm. that's and like like i am the thought it seems at at that time if you know what i mean i I don't have any uh, detachment from it. Mm-hmm. So, and and then from from what you're saying, something big has occurred. Uh, 
we, we talk about having um, the person inside and then there's suddenly there's no person and from from that change it seems everything a lot of stuff come, comes comes about including having these thoughts suddenly come from we don't really know where from so did did you ever wake up one morning and just say you know what there's no one there anymore there's no person here did i ever wake up like that but totally hollow all of a all of a sudden yeah because because oh. all the other, yeah yeah i'm just saying it maybe that's primary maybe the the missing person is primary but um mm. I'm, I'm just just talking uh yeah i've got no skin in the game as, as <laughs> far as it's i'm just just throwing it out there because all these things I, I just just want to bounce them off you yeah yeah um yeah, for here, how it happened is like it it was clear that there was no center to anything. And so the thoughts came from nothing. And this body wasn't owned by anyone. It was just also, it was also empty. But then um, if, if once, once it was clearly seen, there was still the arising out of energetic habits, the, the same conditioning that was happening in this body. So at moments it felt like the, the almost the person was like pulsating in and out and it was very uncomfortable. Um, yeah. And then it seemed just like over time, because there was no center to it, it, it was able to kind of like fall away and the body kind of purged, cried, um, spoke about stories if it was sticky. Um, so there's this real sense of needing to be special, unique, you know, maybe even having a, a meaning. And when we when we don't have anything to hang our hat on, you know, that can be very sad and depressing uh, or, or, or no one loves us, we don't feel special. Uh, so surely that need to feel special, I guess it's on the, the human level, uh, you saw almost, it's almost like a fact, a human fact. Now, um, and what you're suggesting is that that can dissolve mm -hmm. yeah because so, yeah. if no one if no one is here then where's the need to feel special and <laughs> then, then it's it's just seen that oh there's no one special there's nothing special anywhere everything's equal so thoroughly Yeah, you're not the first one to talk about things being equal. Mm. Yeah, and um, I mean, it's hard to. Yeah, I, I I do remember you talking about your your sister, and and like, yeah, you know, the let's say the beggar on the street is not quite as equal as your sister, but in some ways they are. Can you tease that apart? Yeah, yeah. I I think it's that um, there might be remnants of like familiarity with my family members because I just know that body. And there is still, I, I still think that there's something energetically there. I would still mourn if that body disappeared you know but it would be a different morning than the the literal energetic relationship because that was mourned here that was lost um yeah and with that i would say then there's no need to change anyone it's it's because i don't see a person in there responsible for anything 
But that also means there are pre there is preferences here. So if someone attacks me, there is a preference to not be around that, even though I know like no one's doing that. So in a way, you're actually projecting onto me the fact that there's no one in here and I'm projecting onto you the fact that there is someone in there. And so <laughs> what humans go around projecting onto each other all day. And they can't ha ha help it. It's automatic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so you don't stop and think, oh, well, you know, there's no one in me. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's strange that we just assume that everyone else sees life the way we do, and, in fact, we impose it on them. I, I don't know. Just because, I mean, what if you and I are both wrong and we're projecting it onto the world? Yeah, like, you know, um, I, he, here's um, three, <laughs> three states. you got... Whatever I think is going on, uh, I'm a person and everyone has pe people in them. I, From my own understanding, I acknowledge that when I see a baby who's one year old and they their eyes shift to the corner because there was the Uncle Dave moved his hands, I know that there's no one inside that baby. But all of a sudden, as the baby grows, I'm, I'm imagining almost like a stalactite drip, 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 and the stalactite grows inside them as this energetic feeling. So, okay, so there's, there's how I see the world. And then there's you, you're saying time does not exist, cause and effect does not exist, you know, there's no one inside. And then there's the guy who's being operated on and we've got him under anesthesia. And then when he comes out of it, time really didn't exist. Mm. Like, like that he could be under for 10,000 years and it would just seem like that so you know I, I guess uh, within the limits of a, a functioning human being I, I think we can only only take it as far as the enlightened individual but it's I don't know what my point was there but it was fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, it's, it's kind of amazing, though. That's, I think that's where the complexity comes in because, you know, whatever whatever is here, it'll, yeah, automatically relate to whatever's out there from whatever's in here. Yeah. And it can't help but do that. Yeah. Um, no, uh, yeah. A agreed. Uh, this this uh, this staying up late is we, we we're getting away with it so far. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. uh, yeah, uh, I just touched on it. Then time is unreal. Nothing leads to anything else. Yeah, I I don't know if you said that, but what do you think of that? Mm. Yeah, so time isn't registered anymore. So you can you can still the body still naturally does what it does. But but for some reason the computation of of time isn't registered in the same way. So because I think when there is a center then it, it feels linear. It, it literally feels like I did this, this, this. And then it can see cause and effect. It can see what led to what. And it, it makes sense of things in a very linear way. Um, but without, without that kind of construct, then... Yeah, it just seems like the body's just doing what it's doing, just like the tree is doing what it's doing, but the tree can't really register time. Like, oh, I, I didn't have any leaves before and now I have a lot of leaves. Um, 
it can be noticed. Like that can appear as a memory here. Oh, before I was sick, but now I feel better. That can arise. But that's, that's just a thought, you know, a functioning of this body, a thought that's appearing in this timelessness. Yeah, it's a good example with the tree. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I can, can't see a tree uh, being cognizant of time. So for you, no timeline. Uh, as far as you and I are concerned, we never started this call. <laughs> Is that, or I, because I, I know you've talked about it before that you, you can look at, you, you know, you're in your house. You don't have to think about it. So you you know that this this call started. You don't have to think about it. But really, truly, did this call ever start? Like, mm. yeah, that's that's just the interpretation that the brain is having. That this is actually happening the way we think it is. But when when nothing is known, nothing actually makes sense. We we really don't know what's happening. What what's going on? Then, then it's it's like yeah, things appear to happen, and they feel real and solid. But yeah, nothing's actually happening. But this isn't a, a thought process. It's more like there when there's just an emptiness here. You know, everything is seen as empty, equal, undefinable, unknowable, boundaryless. You can't really define anything for sure. So, yeah, don't worry. I, I just writing down notes. That's fine. As you just so I can keep it in my head. So, if if we take your room as an example, everything's equal, borderless, non lab. Nothing has labels. It's just just. A room is that uh, just an amorphous? Well, it can't be. No, yeah. Um, so, how would you just just because you pretty well nailed it just just about half half a minute before saying everything is equal and and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, but do you see everything? Do you see it as a whole, edgeless? Yeah, lots of colours. Yeah, the, the visual perception is kind of uh, very similar. So it's not, like, it's not like I see things differently. I think it's totally energetic. Like, um, yeah, this, this sense of, of an eye is, is projecting the reality and solidity in everything. And then it just automatically does that no effort needed it just does that and then when when energetically something seems to dissolve it's very unnoticeable you you can't really even define that exactly what went then then everything is unknown everything is not solid everything is just kind of in a way i guess nothing or energy appearing as that but we've only labeled it and we know it only conceptually you know that this is a computer but, but not really that's just a name or a word or yeah this you once you once said that there's there's no one behind the eyes something like this I don't know if you said there's there's no one in front of the eyes or something. It was just this this idea that nothing was everywhere and there was no real, I guess, um, you know, uh, solid sense behind the eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's when it's like, okay, I'm not I'm not the body and I'm not seeing. When that goes, then it can it can kind of seem like the location from where things are happening that kind of goes so then yeah the body still sees 
but it's not coming from a here. It's just seeing, and there is no separation. So I'm not seeing this body. It seems like it's seeing, but there's, there's in that sense, location doesn't make that much sense, even though it's, it, it's still generally coming from the body, the perception. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it, it is really like a, a center that locates everything in perspective to it drops. And you, then just what's appearing to happen. You said generally, it generally comes from the body. Where, where do thoughts and feelings, where would, you, where would you say they spring up for you? From within the body, within a contained head, or, or do you experience them more broadly, if you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, like right now, I would say thoughts are still generally in this area. Yes. I think. Yes. But it, before it was more like, here um emotions if the body's triggered i can still sense that it's it's like stronger in the stomach or something like that but generally um it's hard it's much harder to define an inside and an outside you know if the body's not really triggered then generally it just it just feels more diffused. Like I'm not sure what I'm feeling. I'm not really feeling anything. I just don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a, very interesting. I mean, you know, I, I I was first amazed when I when I realized that my my knowledge of my feet was dif diffused, and uh, my feet were not containers that contained. You know, I know I have nerves that go inside my feet, and yet the experience of what those nerves are doing is, is actually outside of the container of the of the leg. So, it's uh, it's it's really quite amazing. And so, I like the idea of having thoughts appear almost half a meter <laughs> away from you. That's cool. Uh, you you said um, once that your ability to take a position is gone. Like I get really angry by American politics and there are certain politicians that I, oh, that infuriate me. Uh, is that the sort of position you're talking about or not, not quite as extreme as that? Just any, any position. Mm. Um. I think this also varies with certain characters because certain things can still stick. Because I still see characters very fired up about certain things. But I think it might be one, yeah, there's no one here really able to take a strong stance on anything. But two, I think it's part of the character to already just be quite equal and neutral in general. But I can also say, like, I noticed yesterday, like, I can't see color anymore. Like, I can't see Asian or white or black. I just don't register that anymore. So in that way, I can't take a position. I can't say anything about, like, what's better than what or... Um, yeah, and, and countries don't really register. It's just a concept, you know? And, yeah, politicians are just, like, there's no actual person in there. It's just a lot of so-called corrupt ways of viewing things and doing things. And no one's actually in power, even though that individual will feel like it has power and control. 
Um, yeah, it's more neutral. Okay. It's like just what's happening. On the on the not being able to see different races, uh, first of all, that surprised me, and second of all, that sounds really great, really promising, actually. Uh, so, uh, you yeah, know, that's that's to be encouraged. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> like, I, you know, um, that's great. Yeah, it's great. It's great for the the person, though. It's not it's not viewed as great here. It just seems like what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so that was that was that. This, now we got a new new lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that was that was. I've asked that one. So you, you talked la last night and you've other times as well, um, something along these lines. This is the greatest heartbreak, the loss of me and my life that never was. Now, just before you, you, you say anything about it, uh, obviously everyone's different and, and so not for all. Um, some some of the, the the young energetic people who've who've made the transition they look very happy mm -hmm. uh some of some of the people who i'd say don't experience emotions that deeply are happy and of course i don't know they may experience them very deeply uh but then there are you know this 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 group of people who you know I could, I, you know, I could really imagine that what what you're saying is true. That it could be absolutely devastating, but particularly for these people who haven't asked for it. That's the, <laughs> they're the they're, yeah. If you ask for it, then and you then you get it. Well, be careful what you ask for. Um, and so yeah. So anyway. Um, yeah. yeah. You... I mean, I didn't expect it to be like this because you can't imagine it. You know, it's just like unimaginable. So even as it was happening, I was like, oh, no, this is not what I wanted. Because <laughs> um, I, so I what it, didn't know what to expect. It's just like. So I was just going to say, so, all right, this is not what I wanted. What are you sitting on the couch and and you? I'll I'll pour myself a red wine now, or or I'll 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 ring someone up because I really feel like, oh, you know, like are you genuinely in distress because mm. you no longer feel like you're there? Did you feel real? Mm. So it it felt more like the body's actions was changing so because no one was owning the body the body was acting a bit differently it wasn't trying to be anything it just was so any hopes or dreams that i had it wasn't able to really be acted on the body just didn't do it and um I just didn't want to talk to friends anymore because I just knew they couldn't relate. And I also didn't want to explain this and didn't want to just say anything about this really. Cause I just didn't want to. And so it was, it was also really lonely to lose everything. Cause I, I literally like, couldn't force myself to maintain relationships it kind of was just falling apart and you know I couldn't be like at least with my mom I I couldn't cater to her feelings anymore because that's what I used to do a little bit at least but it was it's just what it was and like I couldn't explain what was happening here. It was just like, you know, 
I was mourning the death of me and her because my story was intertwined with anyone close to me. So I was mourning the people close to me and they had no idea. I couldn't explain yeah. that to them. And, but now I can say it, it was really horrible, but now I can say there's no worry about it anymore. It's all kind of gone. And I'm able to just speak to people more normally as if nothing ever happened. Okay, so you're sitting on the couch realising that your body's going to move when it wants to mm -hmm. and there's a, there's a part of you that's watching that sort of freaking out because you don't know when the body's going to move. <laughs> and, and, you know, you know that you haven't spoken to your, your sister for a week and you know that you don't feel like it and that you're just going to sit there. And at the same time, this sounds like it's not, it's, it has nothing to do with depression, but in a way that, that sort of just you're stuck and you can't, you can't move is, is, is similar to depression. Now, ju just in the fact that there's, there's a, an inability to activate, an inability to suddenly get off the couch and say, I'm the master of my own destiny. I'm going to go make my bed. Whereas mm. that, that was not, not possible. Mm. So, I mean, there's not much you can really say to that, but um, uh, it just, it just sort of, I, I totally recognize it. It's not, not depression and mm. it's nothing to do with depression. I just thought they they do have that little connection and that someone else could actually say, well, you know what, you are suffering from depression. They could misdiagnose, yeah. That, that's why I didn't want to tell anyone because they would just say, you're depressed, you need to do something. And I, I could tell that it wasn't depression because I've been depressed. And it, it, there, with depression, it feels like I could numb myself a little bit. I could just binge watch stuff or... I could do something, but here, even like all of my interests were going too. So I couldn't really watch anything. I couldn't immerse myself in books, even like non-duality, which I used to love. I couldn't escape anything. It was, it was just what was happening as horrible as it was. So you had no, there was no choice, but to like, in a way, go through it. But and did you have a lot of thoughts at the time or were, was it relatively quiet inside? I think the there were panicking thoughts, yeah. Like what's going on? Like is this gonna end? Like yeah, confusion. A lot of confusion. Um, but I had I had support from someone who he 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 was like a few steps ahead, you can say. And he kind of knew what was going on and that it does change. So it's, it's going to continually change, as you say. So it'll yeah. be interesting to, to, to see you in a year coming out and removing all your videos and like arguing with yourself and, no, nah, she doesn't know what she's talking about. Well, no, actually, I like that I documented the confusion because not many people document it. And I have a sense that the, the young people you're seeing, either they haven't fully, because things will drop when they drop. But it seemed like here it dropped in uh, kind of intensely, like a lot at once. So it was really hard. And if they're a speaker, they don't talk about this. They don't talk about the story as much because it's a story. It's not really happening and it is true. But I like talking about it. I'm actually interested in talking about it. And I can see how 
it's the it can be the most devastating part because you're you're literally seeing your life crumble but then once once it's kind of you know more neutralized then it's like okay nothing actually really happened nothing was actually lost and now you feel a bit more rejuvenated like it's just life it's just simple ordinary life for no one you know it's just living all right that was the greatest heartbreak uh He's, uh, the end of the me sense is the end of free will, doership, time, space, location, cause and effect. Now, now um, uh, the, the cause and effect and the time are the ones I just got to take for, like, you've, you've already explained those um so i mean it's just a whole lot of stuff bound up with the me there isn't it really yeah yeah i told you i would start getting repetitive <laughs> <laughs> uh, have, have uh do you have much of a self image left uh you know like um I'm an excellent artist, and if if someone was to come up behind you and say, "Well, you know, you realise that you actually you've you've done that piece of art before, and we're getting a bit sick of it," uh, it, 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 would you go, I, "I'm an artist," or, or you, you haven't been very defensive? I must admit, in in any of the videos I've yeah. seen, but. But do, do you know what I mean about self-images? I, I don't know if we have conscious ones, but I reckon we might have unconscious self-images where, you know, that, that suddenly they someone has a, a, a go at something and we, we, um, we, we get um, defensive about it. Mm. Well, if you want to pass, just go... <laughs> And ask. Yeah. Way. Um it's 1 30 a.m. here. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um I yeah. There was defensiveness here as a person with certain things. Cause there was a lot of insecurity, a lot of um self-doubting. So if someone said something really painful that was meaningful to me, then yeah, it would hurt. But yeah, now it's like, I think, I think like in the beginning, defensiveness can arise, but it has nothing to stick to. So apparently over time, it would just diminish, I, I would think. And it doesn't matter it wouldn't matter to anyone like because nothing really has much meaning it's just very sim simple and like the body will do what it does whether it's so-called good um uh, it doesn't really matter i guess in a way so you said at the beginning there, there might have been a little bit of defensiveness was that because you were in transition mm -hmm. and and you sort of, you actually, you, you would, well, I would be uh, unsure of everything. Yeah. Where's, where's the solid ground? And so if someone came up to me and said, well, you know what, Stephen, you're doing it all wrong, then I would not be in a place where I could cope with that feedback. And is that the sort of thing you're talking about, that a sort of a transition? Yeah, yeah, because everything is so uncertain and up in the air. And there, there can be thoughts of trying to figure out like what's going on. Um, and I do know someone who's like, he's, he's really in the middle of his life as it was before, but he completely changed, 
but everything around him is like the same. His family, he didn't tell anyone that anything happened, but he's acting differently. And people are like, you need help. Like you, you should do something. You should be more positive. You should, you should, you should, you should. So it, it, it does trigger him. Like not having support anywhere is really a horrible feeling. I think for any living organism. Yeah. Um, so that kind of stuff can still arise. That's a, a good point to show how um, important it is to get some form of support when you're going through something like that so that you don't feel like you're insane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this one is just saying it's, it's not by you. I wrote this down in 2016, so six years ago, and someone had said that the the the, the person is like, a, oh, I don't know. They didn't. Let's say it, the person is a moving cloud. It wants to say, no, I am real. I am permanent. I am fixed. I am a separate entity. The me thinks it's real. Uh, throw that on to the top. Yeah. 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 It thinks it's real. Solid. Yeah. Fixed. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it feels. So, okay. When, when it, when there's a sense of a uh, here, I'm, I am, I'm here. It feels automatically separate from the world. So forget about even the added on identity structures. It's just the sense of here, I'm separate from the world. Like that's threatening in itself. That's like, you want some security because you feel separate, you feel insecure. And it's so normal that anything on top of that will kind of be on shaking ground. It will, it will always be like, am I good enough? Am I this enough, that enough? Should I improve? So it's all based on a sense of I'm not whole yet. I'm not fulfilled yet. I'm lacking in some way because I feel separate. So it's so normal and natural that it will seek for wholeness in, you know, all of these different types of ways. And that's what strengthens the sense of separation of, of me, even though it's not there but the identity feels really real because a whole life was constructed out of that. Well, I must admit I've been really confused for a long time because of all those different aspects mm -hmm. and that you've just said, well, actually probably the most important one is here and there, me, me and you. And would you say that that's the energetic contraction again that gives us some sense that we're looking out from and you know and, and you're over there wow that's okay and then we can add on all the stuff like concepts and labels and my story and all that but yeah basically okay and it, it seems like um it could be twofold where the the body itself can have some differences from other bodies you know but in society you're trying to be normal you're trying to be accepted you're trying to fit in in a way you know but the body itself is so different period you'll never get an identical body and different bodies will just function differently so that's one thing and then on top of that when there's identification with the differences it, it can amplify the uh, anxiety around it or like the stress around it because you're, there's an identity of it and a wanting to change it maybe or, you know, but yeah, so that can add on to it. But in a general sense, I would also say like, yeah, get to know the body 
and it's kind of normal functioning, normal meaning like just what's normal for that body. And like, that's just how it is. You know, no one was responsible for it. It's kind of more genetic or um, it's not personal, you know? You're saying that the, the being part of society and, and other, other people are feeding back to us a lot of stuff and our nervous system is going, yes, I am pretty good looking and, yes, I am, I am good at cricket or whatever, and it is then moulding itself and somehow uh, very possibly building, you know, more, more of a sense of clenched self, if, if particularly if it's not liked, if, it, if it's not getting its needs met and stuff. And this, the, 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 the question that I have there is like seeking energy I understand, but I don't understand how much a crippled self-image or a, a crippled set of emotions is part of you know, the, the enlightenment journey. And like probably it's different for everyone, different bits fall off for different people. So, but you, you made the point that it's, it's best to get the therapy done before, <laughs> before enlightenment so that when you, when you get there, you, you don't have as much uh, suffering on the other side. That was right, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I, I think that will happen naturally if that's the natural inclination there. Um, yeah, of course. So, yeah, so I think I, I'm not quite sure. So the, the therapy, I've never had therapy, but like I can see how working through the psychology to a certain degree could just be more comfortable in general, you know, to not suffer like that much. But it will never get to the root, obviously, you know, because it's still working on the self. Um, yeah, so it's the self trying to mend itself. There's no problem with that. Because yeah. um, sometimes emotional dysfunctions uh, can lead to immaturity and other stuff. And so it's good to pick that up with therapy or whatever and just tone it down a little. Mm. Uh, because you know, pe people might you might not quite fit in. I mean, eccentricity is one thing, but yeah, sometimes the the um, that that's just that's actually has been my experience that I had to tone down a little. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so, so yeah, um, and therapy helped in that regard. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So the ironic thing, I, I think it can be confusing when you hear speakers and then when you hear what's advised in therapy, because uh, therapy will normally be to try and make the person relatively healthy, you know? So that's a value system. That's like what what is you should be a relatively moral person, more um, like a bit more honest. And so there are preferences here for that. I, I actually prefer health and I prefer honesty and not scamming people, things like that is just a preference here. But I can see when you're out of the opposites, when you're, you don't see the duality, it's like then morality is out of the picture. Whether you're honest or not is out of the picture. So, you know, the, sometimes the speakers can be more radical. Like that's, there is no duality. There's no, there's no opposites and stuff. So I can see how it can get like tricky. So, so let's just say, all right, We've talked for two hours about therapy, but this is it, isn't it? So then we would, I guess I'm suggesting we, we quickly change gears. This is it. You're saying there's no morals because it's whatever's happening mm. and, and that can be anything. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, and and so so on one hand, let's say that that is that, uh, but it could on the human level could it could be too much for one soul to handle, couldn't it? You know, su suffering can be you know terrible in in war situations and so on. And so, what does this is it mean? Why do people always evoke those situations to make a point? I mean, extremes are good to make a point, but um, what what point are we making? Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry for laughing. It's not a good time to laugh. No, no. No, it's such a good question. Um, and I think probably most, a lot of people like have that question. But yeah, I do think it's like when, when there is no more identification, there is no more self here, then there's no more self anywhere. You can't, you're, you're not able to project a self anywhere. It's all totally just unbound, unknown, no one anywhere, just pure life living, empty life living. Then whatever is appearing to happen, whether it be saintly or like a sinner, I don't know, you know, heaven, hell, it's, it's all inclusive in this unknown mystery. So to say that we can only have the positive, like just make the positive happen is not even possible, it seems. Because there's no reason for it, but it just seems like um, the good always in a way balances out the bad and vice versa. So in a way, you can even say that trying to be good, there will always be the bad. Yeah. And then when that disappears, then it's just neutrality and it's just what it is. Um, but I think as human species, you know, Yeah. I mean, the preferences here can also dissolve. I can see that it's a preference here to, yeah, want, want people to like suffer a little less and, you know, be relatively healthy and not so, hmm. Yeah. Aggressive, I guess. And yeah. Would, would you, um, you know, like I've been called, and probably many people have, but get called rescuers. Mm. Uh, so, so let's let's say, you know, that was that was. Let's say, as a growing up, you were a rescuer. Uh, now that you've had had the shift, it's like we've got positive remnants of of compassion and maybe some rescue elements what 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 do you make of that like it's not it's not a problem for you is it it's probably uh, allows people to recognize the, the same person sorry it's 11 47 a.m <laughs> <laughs> yeah um Recognize the same person. Uh, let, let me let me let me say it a different way. Okay. More more honest. Okay. Um, do you ever worry about being a rescuer? Yeah, there is no rescuer here. There there can there can be just compassion in a general sense. Just honestly, like if I talk to someone at the park there can be compassion for their story. Not necessarily, but like it can just arise. It just happens. It, it just seems there, but like it's not owned by anyone. So no one's trying to be compassionate. Um, I, I could also be angry, you know? 
it seems like less of a tendency here, especially because there was a lot of just expressing of anger fully. So now it's, there's not much yeah, reason to be angry unless someone like really steps my, over my boundaries or something and it's not welcome. Um, so that, that's another thing, uh, boundaries. So did you, did you le learn them prior to uh, awakening? Mm. Like they're pretty important. Uh-huh, yeah. I learned about boundaries before, yeah, because there were very yeah. poor boundaries here. Um, and then I would say, like, only with the, the falling away of the person was then their just natural boundaries just being made. And I wouldn't even label it boundaries, but... Yeah, it naturally happens because, like, for instance, what would happen here is, like, the person would be so compassionate that it would only see the story and, and suffering of another and then really co be compassionate about that and allow hurtful actions to happen to me. And just say, just excuse it. Like, oh, they're really suffering. They don't know what they're doing or like they can change or it was just all story. But now I would say like, there's, there is no story here. There is no more truly being able to see their story as real. Not that I can't be compassionate, but I don't see it as like real, you know, it's not really triggering anything here. So now it's like, if there's an action, that's just like, the body just says no, like, no, thank you. I don't want to do that. Or um, Lisa Cairns, um, when she, when she first uh, awakened, she was really chill. She was like very, had a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of peace and she allowed people to push her around to do things that she wasn't really willing to do. And it took her some time to develop the oomph that she needed after the transfer in order to reassert those boundaries. So that, that's interesting that, you know, everyone, um, ultimately the, the boundaries get asserted or reasserted, but it does seem to take, some time because people are in that I don't know that chill space where mm -hmm. they're you know just oh I'll just go with the flow and you know like oh they're you know as you say they're suffering you know I'll 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 take it on myself and then eventually uh, Lisa got to the point where she was like yeah this is unrelated but she said if if I don't want to hang around with someone I won't hang around with someone whereas when she was younger. She would, oh, you know, I, I should spend equal time with everyone, but she's not mm -hmm. like that anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. I mean, the boundary is, like, it's important, especially because, yeah, it's such a big thing with, I think, like, super sensitive people. It can happen quite easily. Um. It, there was a, a big learning curve here, especially when YouTube was started. There were a lot of people contacting me and there was a lot of like a, the overgiving that was happening. Um, and it kind of, it kind of ran itself until the body was exhausted. And then there was a, a learning like, oh, okay, I have to set certain things so that I, I don't constantly do that. Um, and then now it's very more simple to just say, like, no, no, thank you. Or like, yeah. So, so was that a, a natural process? You know, like I, I watch television that's bad for me and I feel bad watching it. I, after I, get, I get an initial heart starter, get some adrenaline and it's sort of like a mild antidepressant. 
and then it'll get too much for me and I'll feel bad. And then the next day I do it all again. Whereas you seem to have learned, you know, you this you went through this process, got exhausted, and what? You, did you consciously say this uh, this has got to stop? Or, or did you say I didn't enjoy that? Or mm. it's it. I think it's a combination. I think it was honestly mainly like the person wasn't at the center of the doing. Like the overgiving was just an energetic pattern that was running here, and then it ran out of steam. Then there was a scene like the body's exhausted. I actually don't want to continue like this. So then things, things happened and it was difficult. Um, so I, I think it has partially to do with yeah, the disappearance of the person. And it was just seen as an energetic mechanism that was running. And there was a preference and desire here to not be a doormat because that was the tendency here. So I think that was still here. Like, yeah, I don't want to be stepped on. So, so that was the organism asserting itself because there was no longer a, a person there. So it wasn't, yeah, you know, it, it, I see a slight difference. Uh, the organism definitely doesn't want to be stepped on. Mm-hmm. And so it, it used its, one of its programs, which was, um, what are we talking about? Boundaries. And it said, all right, I'll this far and no further. And that, and, and that's obviously worked. So <laughs> yes. Yes. But with yeah. Other, yeah. With other organisms, it might, it might still take a couple more times and then, so there's nothing wrong with that either. I just can't beat this, This um, and this is how I, we'll finish it. I just cannot beat this uh, watching this American junk TV, getting myself all riled up every day. You know why I do it? I, I don't know if I've told you this. It's because I have a very boring breakfast, <laughs> you know, oats and prunes. It's just terrible. Uh, wal- walnuts and almonds. I mean, it's, it's healthy. And it's just to make it takes time and to eat it takes time. And I just want something to go into my head that, so I don't have to be bored. Now, you don't get – you tell me you don't get bored as easily. So so you, you probably um, would be happy just eating your breakfast without listening to the radio or watching television or anything like that. Mm. So I've got that to look forward to. Uh, well, the, it's it's a shame that we can't. There are no guarantees, so right. so that's yeah. But it's been it's been uh, this one. I'm happy for you to put up because yeah, I have I haven't um haven't haven't gone to any any interesting places. <laughs> oh okay. Oh nice. <laughs> 